They've sunk an enemy destroyer. Hey team, this is Ripper here. Hope you guys are doing fantastic. Another really, really crazy, uh, fun day of just uh, Druid on randoms here. Map 2 Brothers, let's take a look at it. But as always, before we begin, like, subscribe, button below. Appreciate all the support. And I uh, can't thank you guys enough. 2,000 subs, doing a free premium DD giveaway. Let's get to the action here. Druid, I'm telling you guys, this is um, pretty darn fun. If you don't know what the Druid is, it's basically the uh, daring on steroids uh, where you got more HP. You only have two sets of guns, no torpedoes. You literally are just a knife fighter. You are literally going into a battle arena with just two sets of guns. But these guns are something a little different here that pack a punch essentially this is the people call this the mini mini tar instead of the minotaur but the mini mini tar um you're talking about look at what we're firing here we're just firing 127 millimeter ap shells with improved ricochet angles which means that you literally have to be asked to target you know, or asked to me at that is <laughs> so to speak that in order to deflect the, the maximum uh, capability of these shells but you notice like i'm still doing penetration at different angles and so forth again sorry to sound dirty and all but that's the stats you got a literally angle of 75 degrees or more to really max i mean look at him angling right here this um this yamagiri now he's going to be a pesky person here okay look he's angling right well let's take a look at the, the, the shell damage here look we're still doing damage to him even though he's angling, you're not, it's not really deflecting very well. And even if he does, um, and when he gets within less than 75 degrees of that threshold, you're doing even more damage. So it, this is just nonstop. I mean, the shells are coming out every second here. And it's just very, very difficult to mitigate. And I'm just keeping firing. And boom, we get a splash one kill. And you can see, as the title of the video goes, we're going to get a Kraken. Let's see how we do it here. And we're going to drop that Kraken easily with this uh, little mini tar. Uh, because the rate of fire is just so ridiculous. And I, honestly, I think this is probably the, one of the best metas right now to counter. Or I'm sorry, one of the best ships to counter the current meta of CVs and um, uh, submarines and so forth. And I'll show you why. There's a later video I'm going to show you of me going up against the carrier, which looks hilarious. Uh, it, it, it's so funny. But uh, I'll show that video at another date. But it's just so funny that the AA on the Druid actually is kind of somewhat decent in a sense in co combination with smoke. With these quick smokes, again, just like the Daring has those quick British smokes. Uh, the speed acceleration is incredible on the Druid. Uh, the rate of fire, obviously, you can see. The angles are okay, but most of the time you're going to be nose into the target anyways. I'm just kind of being conservative here. and uh, Being a good DD player is not rushing into your death, but also trying to mitigate damage as much as you can using smoke, reversing into caps, reversing into shots, as you can see in here. And just look, this guy's kind of angled, but look at the shells, what they're doing. They're doing about 700, 300, 500 damage every second. And you can see over time, it builds up very, very quickly, and it's kind of annoying. And I think that was the biggest gripe uh, I've seen in the chat, where it's like, man, uh, what the hell is that ship? My God, what is that Druid? Druid, stop hating on me. And so forth, you're getting a lot of that when you're playing a Druid. It, it, it just seems like that Smolensk, I think it might be the next kind of Smolensk of destroyers because it's so darn annoying. The reload's crazy, the smoke screen's annoying, and then if you build for the way I build it, full uh, gunboat, you are literally getting shots out to 14 and a half kilometers, which is very difficult for uh, anybody to hit any kind of small target at that range if you get wonky guns. Now look at this, we're re re going out and reaching the gearing. He is about seven out, and look, we're, look at the accuracy we're getting. We're just sheer volume of shells. Uh, this is what the Druid provides, and it's, it's pretty darn incredible. Look, he's trying to angle right, he's trying to angle, and by the time he gets that full turn, and look, we're still doing the damage, and we're, we're doing the business on him right there, and we're still getting kills, even though he's one, or I'm sorry, he's still getting damage, even though he's 180 out. And, um, I mean, man, this thing, that's why I like it so much. It's just consistent, consistent, pure raw damage with accuracy and damaging AP shells. I don't need to start fires. I'd rather just do hardcore alpha damage. And I think, I'm not sure, but I think Citadel and AP damage, it's a little bit more difficult to heal back. Correct me if I'm wrong. Fire damage is easy to heal back. That's what you see all the time. Especially with destroyers nowadays that don't have heals. I mean, the Druid is awesome because it does have those British heals. The British line's awesome for that reason. The European line's awesome for that reason because you can correct your mistakes by having these heals in reserve. A lot of the other DD lines, like the J Japanese Shimakaze lines or the Gearing lines of the American, they don't have heals. And that is the downside because if you take damage, it lasts, it sticks. So that's why I always shoot at everything. I always shoot at every destroyer I see because you never know that one shell that hits them really makes a difference in the long run. So we're going to see uh, where the enemy is. Okay, so we have a Salem uh, actually coming up here. 
And we're going to take a look. We're going to try to push the Salem. And uh, I know I think he's trying to... Yeah, he's attacking the other cancer of the game, the uh, Smolensk. And the Salem is probably going to do the business on the Smolensk. Probably catching him in the radar and in the open. Yep, and he goes down. So, unfortunately, we lose our Smolensk. So, it's going to be up to us and maybe the submarine to push back to Charlie. Now, the reason why I like two brothers, if you haven't already played this map, you see the two brothers is that two main islands in the center. They give you really nice cover to just sneak your way or sneak a battleship even through the channel there and actually try to push the objective uh, quite easily. Now, it looks like we're kind of losing right now, right? It looks like we're down by points. We're down by ships. Uh, actually, the ships are even right now. Four, uh, four down on each side. But you know what? Uh, I always say you never give up. Keep on trying. Uh, it, it doesn't hurt to take as many people down with you. Now, look at this full broadside cruiser. Now, here's a, where the Druid excels at eliminating cruisers, uh, especially at these ranges, especially with a full gunboat build, maximum DPM firepower. We're going to put in as many shells as possible into his broadside. And look at that. We're getting 1,400 damage off a cruiser every second. Uh, if you get it right now, now he's already slowly angled now. That's exactly what he's doing again as a good destroyer player You want to draw fire and also make cruisers move if you cause a Salem Or any kind of heavy cruiser to actually reverse an angle into you that tells me that you're doing something right because you are More of a threat again as always I said a destroyer player should be a bigger threat than a battleship uh, and then uh, a bigger threat to the enemy so that they either make a mistake by maneuvering and showing broadside to either torpedoes, planes, hack, whatever it is. But basically, you look, you're causing him to adjust his position and fire all because you're just shooting at him. And that's exactly why I like doing. I like being the biggest threat on the field because it, it, it allows you to actually shape the battlefield and move the ships to your liking and in your position. Right now, we have our submarine at the top. Again, I hate subs. I don't know why, but unfortunately, we have to play with them. Subs are at Bravo at the top of Bravo right there. He's going to go cap that one. We have another sub in front of us right here trying to hold off the advance from Charlie. Or, sorry, from, um, what was that, Delta? Yeah, from the Delta side, the east side. Salem goes down from a submarine. Okay. Wow. I don't I don't know how to explain that one. A de uh, devastating strike? Well, my gosh. See, again, you, we caused the cruiser just to lose focus just by focusing on us, and we caused that to happen. Now, look, here we go. We got a full broadside gearing. Again, very bad mistake on his part. Just showing broadside to a druid, and the amount of shells we're pumping out. Look, he's going to go into a smoke, but I don't care. I've already got 10 shells in the air, and boom, he goes down. Splash to 93,000 damage in the first 11 minutes right here of the game. And now it's open season. With the destroyers eliminated from the game, the Druid now has free reign of the battlefield to do things like this, where you are literally just juking the throttle back and forth, and you're just going to go and wither away uh, battleships, cruisers, whatever, and there's literally almost nothing they can do about it other than try to take a pop shot at you, and even then your nose in right here, slim profile, and it really is to little avail. They're just kind of wasting shots. And that's kind of part of the game I really enjoy is them wasting shots. Look at the shots are just flying overhead. He's firing and revealing his position potentially. He's giving up, you know, possible uh, shots on him from other target or from other friendlies. And again, you are literally distracting every single aspect of the enemy uh, to your will. And that's something I really enjoy about the Druid. Uh, the speed is not the greatest thing on the drill. You see it's very, very slow. I'm sorry if the, the video is kind of slow for that reason, but it doesn't matter. We're a tank, okay? We are a tank that is slow rolling in the game. We're waiting for that opportune moment. We will, I always have a smoke ready to go and cool down. It's kind of my get-out-of-jail-free card. Because the guns are so far out uh, range, like 14 and a half kilometers, it allows me to back that distance out from either radar cruisers. So I'm always outside of an American cruiser at 10 plus or 12 plus for a Soviet cruiser. And that, that gives me the flexibility to either uh, fire, uh, let, let the enemy fire at me, then pop smoke and go undetected and then shoot from smoke. So very, very uh, simplistic tactic that is, is just find as much cover as you can, grab it, take the advantage and find that broadside. And here we go. I know he's looking at my thunderer on the, uh, the right there or the left of uh, him. His right, my left. But I'm right now, look, he's not facing it. So a good DD player will look at where the gun's facing. Where, has he taken a shot? What's his cooldown? So I know this Burgoyne's dead now. At this point, he's going to have a fire on him. He's not focused on me. He's focused on the Thunderer, which is his mistake. Because I'll put more damage into him than Thunderer will. So you can see we're taking 1,400 damage every second right there. 1,400, 1,100, 800, 1,300. I mean, 
you, I don't care what ship you are, you cannot sustain that amount of damage. Now he is purely focused on us right now, but unfortunately we are in the smoke. Uh, and then he'll take a free shot. Look, he would rather shoot at blind fire into a smoke rather than actually engage a, a more devastating target like a Thunder, in my personal opinion. But look, he's going to try to angle. And look, the angles are just not doing anything. He is still going to suffer damage. And unfortunately, he is uh, going to have to eat it right here. And boom, splash three. That is the third kill of the day right there. This game is now a little bit more evened up now. And we are going to go ahead and now try to push into Charlie. I'll go ahead and speed up a little bit so you guys don't get bored right here. Okay, so now that we pushed up a little bit, we're going to go cap this try now. We're going to engage the weakest target first, right? Smart DB player. Hey, engage the weakest guy in the map. So that would be the Georgia. And Georgia's probably used up all his heals. I mean, the amount of damage he sustained right there and he hasn't healed it back tells me that, you know what? This is just prime target. Now we're going to slam in reverse and to throw off any kind of shots at us. That's why I also like having the exclamation point marker, the uh, indicator. If I see that blink red, that means someone shot. I will change my vector or speed and throw off the shot that way. But look, this... Look at the amount of damage we are putting. Now, look, Georgia fired on us rather than anybody else. We are a bigger threat. And let's see if we can knock him out. To uh, He actually gets a nice shot on our gun. I always save the damage con for the gun. We do lose. That's the downside. We do lose our front turrets a lot in this uh, in these games because, we, I mean, that's where all the guns are facing. They're in the front. And if they take a shell, they da damage it very easily. That's why I always save a damage con for that reason. He slams into each other. And problem right there. Traffic jam. Georgia goes down. Splash four for us right there. Can we get this cracking? Of course we do. This is in the video. Let's try to nail it with this beige, beige, whatever it's called. And this is where the druid really excels on Japanese style battleships because their armor is so darn weak. It just seems that these shells just, just eat it like butter. I'm telling you, watch this. Look, I don't even have to aim particularly at a particular spot on the ship. I'm just gonna just plunge everything I can into the broadside and just look at the raw damage I'm just getting right there. I like seeing these numbers take up. It's probably something that about seeing it's like a, a Call of Duty where you see a hit marker, a tick marker or something. When you're just seeing the shells hit the, the ship and to see numbers go up, for some reason it's addictive. Let me know your thoughts. Is that addictive? Because that's why I keep coming back to this game. And boom, splash five, crack, and he goes down. And exactly, that's exactly why the Druid is so, so devastating and powerful in uh, the World of Warship game right here. And uh, pretty darn ridiculous. But... Uh, this game is pretty much done. Uh, we are actually, no, look, we are ahead by 100 now. We evened out the playing field a lot better for our team. It's just a, a uh, submarine and the Napoli right now. And we'll kind of speed it up because we try to hunt down the dis the, the uh, submarine. It's pretty darn annoying. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is exactly why World of Warships is annoying right now with submarines. Uh, look at this. You have a battleship uh, going against a submarine. And he's launching torpedoes, and there ain't nothing he can do about it. Uh, he, yeah, he got... Oh, look at that. Full shells right into him. Did nothing, honestly. And he's going to eat it. Uh, wow. Started. Submarine taking out a battleship point-blank range. Uh, I'm telling you, this is ridiculous. That's the shotgunning style right there. Fortunately, he gets the depth charge kill. I mean, that's the style of gameplay. Again, that's why I hate sub so much. I don't see it adding any kind of play value other than let's run into each other, shotgun, and let me do a depth charge attack. Okay. Depth charge attacks were never designed to be fun uh, in any kind of game, honestly. I mean, you clicking on something to watch an airplane go by and drop a bomb. Wait, what is this? The 1980s? Are, are we playing uh, that old submarine depth charge game or, I don't know, old games, arcade games where you missile defense? I mean, come on. This is, this is 2024 here. We're playing uh, tactical surface warfare aiming ships. So I, I, I don't get that. But anyways, I digress. Yeah, but uh, anyways, the last ship in the game, uh, Napoli, nothing he can do. We brought it back, you know, from a, almost a deficit to now we are four versus one. And look at now, I want to show this, the display of this. Like, the Napoli even angled at us is not really doing anything against the Druid. I mean, and again, yeah, look, I said, if he's firing at us and not looking at anybody else, it tells me again, you are a major threat, especially full broadside like that major major threat and of course we're reversing in smoke very very difficult to shoot at especially when you're drawing cruisers to fire into blind smoke that is a very very powerful statement right there so let's take a look at it 185,000 damage in a druid alone five kills for the kraken right there totally awesome uh let's take a look at what kind of yep number one in the team that's uh what we want to strive for and we have yep 185,000 damage pretty good all right, we're playing on this one, and I'll sh do actually do a shout-out to Sea Raptor. He is actually in here. I said thank you for doing great videos. You inspired me to do videos as well as play the way I do just by learning how he played. 
and I thanked him in this game as well, so shout out to him. Go to take a look at his channel, C Raptor. It's pretty awesome. He does great commentary for King of the Seas and all these other uh, aspects of the game. We get our first kill right there, Splash One, and we're also fighting with a bunch of other uh, buddies that used to be in clan. So we're always, I'm always uh, grateful to g have you guys say hi out there. As uh, for those I've played with. And for those that I haven't played with, make sure you say hi. And if I ever get to play with you in clan battles, um, I'm more than welcome. I'm honored and to have a, a great conversation. You guys have been great. Very polite, very courteous, and very professional. I, I very encourage that a lot. That's why I like the community a lot because unlike other games like Call of Duty or things of those nature where the, young, the player base is a little younger, uh, a little less mature, I like the fact that World of Warships is somewhat majority mature. Uh, I'm not going to say all. Uh, there are a couple outliers there, but anyways, we'll try to make the community as a good place and very uh, a friendly and inspiring and productive environment, right? So let's take a look at this. Taking on a, a, a Des Moines. Now, here is the annoying aspect of the Druid. Now, we're not starting fires, as you can see. AP shells don't do that, but what the AP shells on the Druid do, look at the angles that they're approaching from. They're literally coming in and plunging into his deck, and that is also devastating. Uh, for any player because they're literally it doesn't matter if you angle or not that the shells of the way they're coming in are literally going to come in from the uh, the air and down which then uh, 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 penetrates the the weakest aspects of the armor which either is superstructure or the either the deck plating that's not uh, as heavily armored as the bow or maybe the sides or angles right now because now I'm, the shells the angles don't really matter because they're coming in at a 90 to 75 degree angle down and they literally are getting penetrations kills so pretty pretty annoying and pretty powerful for uh, a druid player again you notice i'm always attacking the flanks because the druid excels on flanks never ever ever let a druid if you want to counter this thing and make it go head on to you you charge it and it has no torpedoes so you're not afraid of charging it and do not let it angle if you let this druid angle it will do things like this to your team and it allows you to draw like literally all the fire from your other friendlies right here because look but now the double is only firing me as well as another player to my left is also firing at me um, this is the Faroe Islands, of course, random battles, uh, but again, the, the, look what we're doing. We are literally putting a lot, a lot of heavy damage into the Des Moines, and he is going to sacrifice and give up his position uh, by firing at it, even though where he's nose in, I'm nose in. I, he's doing just as much damage, but again, it is very difficult to hit a druid going back and forth, back and forth, th juking the throttles as well as, you know, being in smoke outside of his radar range. So very super annoying, very deadly. Uh, and now what we're going to do here as a good player, we're going to wait. We're going to kind of see what does the Des Moines do. I'm waiting for reinforcements here. I'm waiting for my my buddy in the Mecklenburg, uh, who I have played with. Shout out to half right there. We have played um, uh, this kind of big, just kind of slow rolling it, waiting for the my friendlies to move up. Again, I'm not in a hurry to rush to my dad. Now, here's where the Druid also excels is when your buddy is drawing fire for you to take advantage of these angles, okay? These angles are it, the Druid's moneymaker right here because you just need a little bit, a little bit of angle. And man, look at that. You are getting these nice 400 to 500 damage hits, and it is deadly. And you can see right there, it is taking, the, I mean, the Des Moines has taken tons of nice damage. Now, the bow of the ship is how, is the weakest spot of any, uh, I would say, a cruiser or battleship. I always shoot for that in a Druid because these AP, these AP shells, man, they, they do a lot of damage when you shoot the bow, especially at close to medium range. You can really get those nice hits. And now I'm just aiming for superstructure hits right at this point because the superstructure, you can't, you can't armor against it. There's nothing you can do to do to angle your ship to avoid superstructure damage. We are now going to adjust fire right here and get that last 177 health left kill. Can we get it? Boom. Splash 2. Angle does nothing. And that's exactly... There goes my turret again. That's why I always try to save at damage combat. But fortunately, we've already made our kill. We don't need the gun right now, so it's gone. Flank has been overturned right here. So let's see. Let's go ahead and cap it and then continue pressing into the enemy flank right here. All right, pushing the enemy Yamato here. Again, a Japanese battle. I'm telling you, uh, the Druid loves to eat these things for lunch. Uh, it's just something about the armor scheme. And it just, I mean, these AP shells just do too much damage to them. Not much you can do about this. It's literally like a mini Minotaur. Just pummeling shells at you from long range. 
Wow, look at that. Right into the cheeks right there and get those nice uh, damage hits right there. We're going to go ahead and go and cap and then continue pressing into Bravo. I mean, the enemy team is pretty much done at this point. They're, I mean, they don't have any caps. They have no map control, and we're just going to have to push in and take, take the area. All right, we've capped Charlie. Now there's Bravo. And again, very, very uh, ballsy here. Uh, Schlieffen going straight in, showing so much broadside. Not sure. I think this is when the enemy just starts giving up and making mistakes. And look at this. The, the Schlieffen is just taking full broadside damage to us. I mean, when you're getting about the, you know, 1,000 to 1,400 damage side hits, those are pretty, pretty darn good. And do we get it? No, we don't. And we're going to go ahead and set, uh, try to get some more kills on the Santander. Again, this is, again, where we excel right here. Full broadside cruisers, especially a light cruiser like the Santander. You want to really aim for these bad boys because they no angling or anything are, are going to deflect these shells. These shells just do so, so much damage, uh, especially if you get it just connecting right on. Now, we are getting a couple non-pins because I think that we're just hitting that armor just at the right angle for those non-pins. But look, we're just going to keep melting that guy. He just went down totally out of the match right there he goes down for the count third kill for us right there only sixty thousand damage wow i'm so very surprised we're gonna go ahead and push the annapolis right here and again broadside cruisers this is our bread and butter right here we're gonna go ahead and swing and help our team we know our team's gonna cap bravo look into the broadside we get a nice helping shot from our mecklenburg and now we just got a mop up at this point this is just too easy yeah go ahead angling was not going to help you at this point it's less going to do melting raw damage right here on the annapolis and boom he goes down right there and that is our fourth kill and we're gonna go ahead and push uh right up the uh the middle there and oh look at the chat this is funny i actually thought this was enjoyable druid i hate you so much and <laughs> but uh you know what uh we always uh we always want to be friendly and enjoy because you know what even though you hate me I'm going to go ahead and type in, I love you. Yeah, we, we love you all, guys. This is all fun and games. It's a great time. We uh, we have a great time out here. And uh, as much as we want to say we hate each other, we always return the, the, the hate with love. And that's all you can have, abusive relationship from the chat. <laughs> Pretty funny. You guys are always funny out there. Yeah, Again, that's why I enjoy the game. Yeah, very funny uh, chat, uh, chit chat banter going back and forth. Let's see if we can go ahead and push uh, the Rhode Island right here. One of my other favorite battleships, Rhode Island. Uh, New Jersey and Wisconsin are coming out. I'm not sure. I think New Jersey is the Tier 10 uh, in Illinois, I believe. And uh, Wisconsin is another Tier 10 Missouri line battleship. Pretty cool. Here we go, setting loose on the Rhode Island. And uh, armor is very, very weak on the Rhode Island, unfortunately. And, uh, yeah, these AP shells are just going to literally wither away the armor like an elevator going from the top four down. And this is how we just take him out of game. Again, he fires at us. And... There it is, Kraken number two. So, anyways, had a blast, guys. Uh, we take this game pretty darn easy, and the game will be over just like that. Let me know what you think of the video in the comments below, what we can do to get it better. As always, like, subscribe, bell button below. Appreciate all the support. As, uh, as I always have said, if you see me out there on the high seas, make sure you say hi. I'll say hi back, and it's always great to build a great community in this uh meta and in this channel so you guys take care look forward to seeing you out there be careful you see me in the druid you know what i'm gonna do and uh it's always fun to have a, a either a friendly teammate or a friendly frenemy that will actually go out head to head and have fun with the druid and always take a shot at us but anyways again be safe we love you guys hope you're doing well and stay safe cheers